so good morning. My name is Nicholas, as uh, mentioned, and I'm going to present my PhD study, which is being conducted under the supervision of Fraser Clark at Dalhousie University and is being entitled here as Understanding Crustacean Shell Diseases Through Omics um, Studies. So the crustacean fishery is a very well-established um, activity in Canada, <clears throat> um, especially in Nova Scotia, being important for the future of the people and also for the econo economy, uh, generating a lot of money and also jobs for population. One of the issues in this activity are the different diseases that arise. Um, one example of these diseases are the shell diseases, as in these pictures down here, uh, which are characterized as being the corrosion of uh, the shell, uh, which could lead to make these animals more susceptible to other infections, but also uh, it, could, it could also lead to the death of the animals in some cases, and all of it could result in economic losses to the fishery. It is um, not well established what exactly is causing these diseases, uh, but some agents could be involved. So in some examples, the <clears throat> climate change uh, could be associated, but that is not true for all shell diseases because we have many different shell diseases that affect different um, crustaceans, species uh, all around the world. <clears throat> um, yeah, but something that is a consensus is that um, chitinolytic bacteria could be involved because chitin is one of the main components of the shell, uh, which has to be removed. So we have uh, lesions like this. In my particular study, I am um, studying three shell diseases, being the impoundment shell disease, the epizootic shell disease, and the black spot shell disease. These three affect um, the American lobster and different species of crabs as well. So the main question that I'm trying to answer is what bacteria could be associated with this disease? What could be causing it? And to answer this question, I am using, I am comparing the microbiome of the animals uh, in different states. So the microbiome of healthy and unhealthy um, animals. So instead of using a classical microbiology approach, I am using a um, metagenomics approach. So briefly, I'm just uh, using the DNA that I collect from the, sorry, I use um, swabs to collect DNA from the, the lesions of these animals or just from the healthy carapace of healthy animals. And I use the DNA extracted from these swabs to do 16S sequencing. And then I analyze and classify this 16S uh, into, different, into the different species of bacteria that um, could be or could not be associated with disease. And then I compare the bacterium of healthy and unhealthy animals. But something important here is that when we have a disease, we cannot just focus on the pathogen because we have a host pathogen interaction that leads to the disease. And that is why I am also studying the host part of the animal. So I'm basically trying to understand how these animals are trying to respond or defend themselves against the infections. So just to understand better the immune system of these animals, the crustaceans have an innate immune system, which is directly associated with the hemocytes, which are the immune competent cells of these animals. And they are responsible for the major uh, respond, immune responses um, in crustaceans, 
being very important. And that is why uh, it is very important to study these cells in, during infections. But there are also other tissues that could be very important for these animals. Um, for example, the petopancreas in red here uh, is a multifunctional organ of crustaceans that are responsible for a lot of different metabolic processes, but they are also responsible for some immune activity. In fact, there are some immune factors that are exclusively produced in the petopancreas. And also the epithelium uh, is very important for being responsible to produce and secrete immune factors for microbial control. But also uh, the carapace epithelium is uh, more important here because it is one of the first layers to get in touch uh, with the external pathogens um, during the shell disease. And that's why I'm studying all of these three tissues or uh, organs um, during this infection. So to do this, I'm basically comparing the transcriptomic uh, between the animals uh, in different conditions, so healthy and unhealthy um, animals <clears throat> with the different shell diseases. So briefly, again, I'm just um, extracting the RNA of these different tissues in the different conditions to do Illumina sequencing and using the retrieved reads to do bioinformatic analysis and try to understand which genes are being more or less expressed in, um, during this, these infections. So just as a preliminary results, um, I have been studying the impoundment shell disease right now, more specifically the transcriptomic um, of it. So here, I have one of the results, it's a heat map, which each column represents the expression of one animal and each row, it's the expression of one gene. Uh, the more blue, the color, the less the animal is expressing and the more red, the more this animal is expressing this gene. So it is possible to see that we have 117 genes that are being differently expressed between groups. Uh, where we have the three groups here, where the uh, green one is the healthy animals and the other two are unhealthy. And something very interesting is that the healthy animals here, they are expressing more uh, of these genes than the unhealthy animals. So it is possible that maybe these animals are having a strong reaction uh, in comparison to the other groups. And maybe that's why they are not being infected or not, being, uh, not having the corrosion of the shell as the other animals. And just a few of these genes are actually immune genes. Uh, as example is the alpha-2 macroglobulin and the C-type lectin, which are genes very important for immune reactions. Um, thank you.